So you've shared like many uh, money tips. Um, and how relevant is your book to Malaysians today? Uh, this is a very good question. This is actually my favorite question. <laughs> oh. I, I read uh, Rich Dad, Pro Dad. That book is like a uh-huh. f- personal finance Bible, right? Uh-huh. You know, Robert D. Kiyosaki. Yeah. So, so that book, I read it when I was 20 years old, like back in year 1999 or 2000. I get. I guess a lot of people now also like when you're asking about what is the personal finance book you should read. I most people will say start with that one, bridge that, pour that. So uh, the problem is that when I read that one, it, it really changed my mind. Is 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 a very good book because it's a superb storytelling. Right through the storytelling, you kind of like learn a lot of money concept. Then after learn that, oh, we are very motivated to do something. But uh, too bad that all the concept, a lot of it. It's not applicable in Malaysia. It's, it's different. Uh, concept is concept could be same, but the environment is different. So a lot of the tricks is actually different. So that's why uh, I would say, you know, when when I come up with this, with this book, I, I'm I'm trying to cover the things that is where Malaysians reader you 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 can find a lot of personal finance book, but a lot of it is actually not relevant to you, especially when you talk about taxes. Like in the US, tax is a huge thing. If you can save on tax, actually, you really save a lot of money. Malaysia, uh, the tax is quite uh, quite favorable, I would say. It's mm-hmm. a lot more better than the situation in, in the United States. Mm-hmm. So uh, so that's what I know. Just, just a difference um, when I talk about taxes. And also investment. Like in, in Malaysia, it's actually a very good environment for investment. There's no capital gain tax, no dividend tax. But a lot of countries, they tax on these two, dividend tax and they... In Malaysia, also don't have estate tax. That's why I think a lot of things in Malaysia that we only Malaysians can apply, and that's not available in other mm-hmm. countries. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I would say very hundred percent, very relevant to Malaysians. Yep. So you talk about how having more money does not correlate to happiness, and how happiness is a single universal purpose of life, which I totally agree. Like mm-hmm. so, and how is your personal experience of this? You know, I, mean, I kind of like talk about this already before this. So, so I think the 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 uh, it is about finding the purpose in life. So, a lot of people, I think, um, there are many authors also write books about you know finding meaning in your life, right? What kind of meaning, kind of things that you do actually make you happy? Some people are lucky finding it out earlier. If you don't know. It, it poses a danger when, let's say, someone he works his entire life. So he's thinking of like, I have to have enough money so that I can retire. At the at the time when they finish with the job, they have enough money and they retire. A few years later, they die. What happened is that when he stopped working, there's a sudden emptiness in life. So he doesn't know what he wants to do. Nothing makes him happy. He's like a uh, kind of lost. So there are people like that. So if if you are in a situation that you are still having a hard time finding what actually make you happy. I think you should spend time on that. Read those books. Whilst I'm, I'm not a life coach that can teach you about this, but I'm lucky that I, I, I know what make me happy. Right. So what makes me happy is very easy. When I feel tension, I will, I will sing. I'll play song. I sing. Then I'll become very happy. I'll just play on piano. So I'll play, play, and then sing, sing, and then it make me happy. So I'll be happy for the rest of the day. I, I like to read emails. So some, some people say that, okay, uh, when, when they give me feedback, uh, some of my article or, or, or message or email that gives them new perspective, you know, I'm happy. I guess helping people also bring a lot of happiness to you. So I guess, uh, you know, this, this, it's just that you, you just have to identify a few of the things that really make you happy. Uh, uh, money can make you happy at the start. But sometimes uh, over a certain stage, it just doesn't uh, bring out the joy anymore. Like, like, for example, we can talk about the car upgrade kind of thing, right? First time I drove a car, I was so happy because be- before that, I was riding a motorcycle. <laughs> so, so when I got a car, it's a 5,000 ringgit car, very old, 20 years old. The car is like uh, the same age as, as, me, as me at that time. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then when I upgrade... To a, a, a better car, it's like uh, I think seven thousand uh, dollar ringgit car. It, it feel like a, so much joy. So and then upgrade, upgrade, some more upgrade until when we're in the states. So the states in the, the car is cheaper. So I we, we fork out. We we will say that uh, 
it is it is okay to you know buy a better car because it's cheaper here since we already pay all the taxes <laughs> in Malaysia you are, you you want to pay tax you buy the car right buy car then you pay a lot of taxes does this make sense like for example the car value actually is like fifty thousand but you pay another fifty thousand to buy that car so it's a hundred thousand car mm-hmm. but actually the car value is fifty thousand but in the state is that you already pay the fifty thousand the tax so you only fuck out mm-hmm. the fifty thousand to buy that car. Mm-mm. So, so uh, this kind of different kind of mindset already here. Uh, so, so when I upgrade, and then we we drive a you know, Volvo SUV, I drive a Mustang, uh, and then I was thinking, uh, if I upgrade some more, it's, it's, it's just like uh, maybe I can get happy for a while, but it's not long lasting. This thing is really it, it doesn't mean anything. It's, it will give you a joy for a, a few months when when you ride it. But after that, it's, it's just like normalized in your life. Like right? you got initial stage of pleasure, but it just like normalized. Mm-hmm. It's the same with uh, upgrading house too. Like when I first buy my house, although it's a small house, but we are very happy with it. When we upgrade a little bigger, and then now a little bigger, and then and then now I'm thinking, oh, should I upgrade some more? No, we are just three persons. So if I upgrade some more, it's going to bring me more misery because uh, a lot more things to take care, right? You know, all your yeah. bills go up. So it really doesn't bring more joy anymore. No, I would say money just until a certain stage, that's it. If you want to find happiness, it's about what you can do for others. No, basically the, the little things that you can find joy in life. So for me, I'm, I'm lucky that I, I know what brings joy to me. <laughs> that is really key, you know, like to, to, to succeed in life, I would say, because like there's no point like you, you keep chasing something that you are really not sure about. I, I hear a lot of example of like, uh, I mean, the young young people who have like such, I see them being so passionate, so energetic about, for example, like to to achieve financial independence and, you know, uh, retire early. I hear this so much, like I want to fire movement and I want to achieve that, like help me with that. But mm-hmm. uh, you know, when I hear more of this, I, I mean, I see, I mean, it's a good thing they have the drive, but uh, I kind of worry like what will happen like 20 years or, you know, 10, 20 years or you know, 30 years down the road because they are seeing the goal as such a big thing. And But what ha- happens after that? Because I also see like a real life example of some people who have achieved that. And you know, every time like, you know, like people who have achieved like or retired, of course, they have more time. They will, you know, call out friends to chit chat and this and that. But, you know, I don't see them having that kind of drive and passion in life anymore. It's like they used to be very energetic. Uh, they, they work very hard. But once they achieve that, they turn into a different person. They have nothing to chase for anymore. But I think you kind of brought out the, the, the key point, which is uh, the key thing is really in the journey, in the process. While they were busy chasing them, they forgot all the small the things that happen in between, like the journey. And once they get there, they have no idea, no clue what's going to happen now. Exactly. Yes, absolutely right. All right. So what is the big audacious habit or goal that you want our audience to uh, take action right now? <laughs> so in fact, you know, personal finance, uh, personal finance, I would say it's, it's quite simple. It's, if you can save like 30% of your money you make, so that means you can just live on the 70% and you save your 30% and you use that 30% to buy productive assets such as uh, properties, stocks, and you have to be skillful enough as an investor to get a return that is a double digit then you have no trouble retiring. Mm-hmm. You know, it's very simple to, to remember, right? Just two things. Save 30%, invest, and get more than 10%. So, of course, there are a lot of details in there how to do that. Mm. Yep, and, it's but, all but, in the book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you, you, you know the goal, then you kind of like know what you should be learning. So, it's very simple. It's just owning assets, owning productive right. assets. Yeah, I mean, it's not part. something, it's not rocket. Yeah. Not rocket science. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, not yeah. rocket science. Everyone can do it and they just have to start right now. Yes. All right. So thank you, KC, for spending an hour with me today. My pleasure to on be here. Our, yeah, on a Saturday uh, morning. And I hope everyone has a benefit from this session. I'll probably see you again in another session on podcast, hopefully. Thank you. If you want to have me back, yes, of course. <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. 
Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you have definitely learned a lot from uh, Casey himself. And uh, and yeah, I mean, for this summary, it's really like it's uh, making um, be, to retire and to be smart with money is not rocket science. The one simple thing that you can start off is saving 30% of your income every month consistently and to aim for a 10% interest rate. So, and it's not too late to still like share our video. Because uh, as I mentioned, we have two copies of this uh, free book. If you participate and you share and you comment and, you know, tell your friends about it and you get to be the lucky one to get this book from us.